Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it involves white space, Ikea, and mice. Yep, those things are all going to be involved in this video. Now, Ikea is one of those places I should never be left unattended because I end up finding all sorts of things I didn't even know that I needed, but I so had to have as soon as I saw them. And that is where the mice come into this. These little guys, they were a whopping dollar a piece. For a buck, how could I not bring some of these home? Except the problem that I have is that they were all white and I'd really rather have rainbow mice. I'd like to have all sorts of colors on them. And I realized, hey, hey, I've got things at home that have color in them. I wonder if I could give these guys a little bit of a color change. So these things are not going to be white thanks to a little spray. Now these little mice, they're gonna have the equivalent of a spa day here. Now they're starting out pretty and white, but the rainbow's about to show up. Cause after all, it's white space. We gotta add some color to it. Now these things have the world's longest tags on them from Ikea, but that makes an absolute awesome handle for this. So I'm gonna leave those tags on until the very end. So now I've got a way to hold on to my mouse. I'm also gonna to want to have some color for it. The treatment will be with fashion spray here. And the mouse will also need a place to recuperate and that would be some wax paper or some place where it's clean and it's not absorbent. All right, so we're gonna dip them right here into this little hot tub of water. Actually, not really a hot tub, it's just tap water. And what I'm doing is working it into the fur. Now this fur, I'm not expecting, how shall we say, the highest quality. After all, this thing was a buck. I know that these are synthetic fibers. I know that this stuff should not really work well for this, but we're gonna nudge it along by simply getting it wet. And that's gonna help the spray kind of move underneath the fibers, get in there as best it can. So once he's prepped and ready, now it's time to bring in the color. And this is basically a spray ink for fabric. So I'm just gonna hold him up and then it's almost, I guess, kind of like a spray tan, except with brighter colors. If you give it just a couple of light squirts, you're gonna have less color on it. If you hit it more times, you're gonna have more color on it. So depending on how vibrant you want it to be will determine how many times, how much color you add to it. But you do wanna make sure that you get all those little nooks and crannies. Things like moving the feet, making sure you've got under armpits, behind ears. It's kind of like when you have little kids in the bathtub, all those kinds of areas, you need to check those on the mice too. Especially around the ears. There is something about the ears that really lends itself to those white spaces. Now I had no idea if this stuff would work on the fur because this was designed for fabric that had like up to 20% synthetic content, didn't have any fabric softeners or treatments, that kind of stuff on it. At least that's what the package says. So this was a little bit of a gamble to see how this would take it because I'm willing to bet there's a whole lot of synthetic in this fur on this very cheap mouse. What I found is the color did a really nice job on the top of the fur, but to really work it in and under the fur and that kind of thing, it might need a little finessing, a little massaging. And that's why having it lightly damp was helpful because that's gonna help the spray ink move underneath that top layer, the, the top coat of its fur. And then I'm just kind of massaging that color around, making sure that it's getting everywhere. And yeah, this is one very happy mouse now that it's got a little more color happening on it. I found that as I rubbed the color in, it kind of absorbed into the mouse, which makes sense since it is somewhat absorbent. So anywhere that I wanted a little more color, I simply gave it a little more spray. So the color's been worked around everywhere. There's one last place that I wanna make sure that I check, and that is right by the tag where I was holding my hand. Since I was holding it there, I wasn't checking it quite as carefully as behind the ears and the armpits and that kind of thing. So now it's time to let this mouse recuperate. I've got a piece of wax paper here, and that way it'll dry overnight. This does take longer to dry simply because there's so much color on this, so much moisture. And speaking of the color, once you're all done coloring your mice, you wanna clean out the nozzles on your spray bottles, and you do that by simply holding it upside down and squirting it until it's empty. So here's the thing. I don't wanna waste any color, so I grabbed an altered book that I have, and I'm actually spraying these onto there. Now, even though this is fabric spray, can I use it on paper? 
Absolutely, because why waste any of that gorgeous, wonderful rainbow? You saw the process for how to color the mice using the Caribbean Fashion Spray, and I repeated that same process for all of the mice, making each one a different color. That's why I have all these different colors of the spray bottles to clean out. Now this was one great big experiment, and all of it did not go quite as expected. This blue mouse was completely covered in the marine blue, and it was all deep and dark, the way the face is, the whole body was that way. But when it dried, yeah, it didn't stay that way. And I'm gonna guess that's because this is some serious off-label use for it, seeing as how I've got a bunch of synthetic fibers there, and it's a stuffed animal. So, what am I gonna do? Yep, I'm just hitting it with some more spray. I'm gonna put some more color on it, and what it really came down to is this color just required two coats. And I'm not being shy with the spray this time. I'm being very generous with this one because for whatever reason, this mouse was really, really absorbing that color in. What I found as I did the six colors is the darker colors needed a second coat and the lighter colors did not. That's not really a shocker. It's kind of like when you're painting walls in your house, right? You put the light color on, things don't show as much as when you're putting a very, very dark color on. Usually when using the fashion spray, you want to heat set it to make it permanent. But I don't know how much these mice can handle. I don't know if I can throw them in the dryer and if they'll survive getting the heat that way. But what I do know is I'm not going to be getting these wet. So I'm not worried about this running at all just because I'm going to be putting these around the studio and not running through the washing machine. So spray painting stuffed animals is a risky thing because you never know how that synthetic fur is going to take the color. But at a buck a piece for these mice at Ikea, it was a risk I was willing to take. So the mice are all dry now and it's time to remove those tags. Remember those big long tags that they had from Ikea? I'm simply going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to trim them up carefully. That tag is gone and now what I've got is this fun, colorful mouse. No more white space on this guy. Lots of bright, vibrant colors. So I've cut the tags off all of them. They're completely dry. And here's what the complete rainbow set of these mice look like. They definitely are a lot more fun now that they've got all this color on them. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of the fun, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. Would you like some inspiration in your inbox each week? Well, then get signed up for my newsletter over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.